My name is Rolf Rosenkrantz, I'm the editor with DevEx, and I'm here in Brussels at the European Development Days. With me is Carla Krivet, the CEO of Philips in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. Carla, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. And tell me, uh, Philips has a new motto, uh, innovation and you. What does that really tell us? What does that mean? It means that we are not doing innovation at its own sake. We are not doing innovation for the technology, but we are doing it for you. We are doing it for you as the customer, you as the community, you as the employee. So it really puts the human touch next to the innovation, which I find extremely inspiring. And the feedback we've been getting from customers all over, but also from communities has been just great. Does it also mean that you're expanding the you, the audience, the customers? Uh, in, are you going more into the developing world, into new markets and emerging markets? Yes, definitely. Developing markets are a key focus of our growth strategy. And in particular, Africa is not the forgotten continent anymore. It's a focus area where we are investing in, where we see future business potential and where we are very much engaged on top of obviously the emerging and um, very um, strong Asian countries. For example, China is our biggest market right now overall. Mm -hmm. What challenges do you face to explore those new markets? Um, if you come into countries at a very early stage, sometimes the purchasing power is not there yet, mm -hmm. right? So we have to enable the communities, we have to enable the population, we have to invest in economic and social development in order to create the markets and be there as first mover before we can start selling our products the way we would do in, let's say, Europe or the US. So how long does that process last? I mean, do you come up with a 10-year, 20-year strategy of economic and, as you say, even social development before you even set foot with the, with the big business? It's a long-term strategy, that's mm. true, but there are always pockets of commercial activities right from the beginning. So we are not a charity as an organization. We are involved in many charity products. We fund them, we cooperate with lots of NGOs, for example, with Orange Babies, a Dutch um, NGO which is looking into improving the well-being and health of women, pregnant women in Africa. And um, we just signed a deal with the Flying Doctors, which is really cool, um, to improve the healthcare structurally also in Africa. We are working with the UN on LED innovation, so we have lots of corporations, but in the end we are also developing our markets for the future. And how are you setting yourself up in these emerging markets so that you actually know what the customer there wants? How are you surveying the customers there? First of all, local relevance and local presence is extremely important. That's nothing you can do out of the headquarter or out of Germany or wherever. You have to be there, you have to have local employees, you have to be in very close cooperation. That's the second part um, with partners, right? So we are really stepping up our relationships with governments, we partner up with NGOs, we have joint products, joint projects very exciting ones, um, just to give you an example, it's a lighting project in Africa where we actually fund um, big spaces which are lit in the evening, so they give, an, uh, so think of a thousand square meter space and um, it's used with LED, so solar energy and then LED in order to give that light to the community and that is then the starting point for lots of activities can think of health activities, but also sports, social activities, but also trading. So you have small uh, women trade organizations starting and you somehow get the business up in these communities. So what then is the business for Philips in that particular instance, for instance? I think there's not a one-to-one -one relationship to the business. It's not that we put up that lighting and then say, okay, and here are our hope cookers and our juicers, please use them, and that's our business case. But we are promoting light, and light is one of our core competences, right? If we um, ensure the need for light is well understood, which is then in the next step 
also see in the funding, in the investment where we as Philip do benefit from. Mm -hmm. And you have made a transition uh, from doing development work um, in Burundi, elsewhere around the world, and now you work in the private sector. If you look back at your colleagues, your former colleagues in the NGO world, in the aid community, what strikes you the most? Uh, wh what do you see as the differences between a business person like yourself now and those folks in the aid community? I think when I worked for an NGO um, 20 years ago, when I started, there were big differences. You had the business work, world, very commercial, very focused on short-term delivery of results. And you have the NGOs where there is a lot of goodwill, but usually not that level of organization and professionalism. I think that dramatically changed. Right now, I'm also in the board of Save the Children in Germany. And when you see the level of professionalism, the way they do project execution, the way they have funnel management of the projects, the entire sponsorship approach, the programming approach, that's highly professional. At the same time, looking into um, organizations, large organizations like Philips, but also smaller family businesses where we have quite a lot of in Germany. The social aspect is more and more one key differentiator, right? Some of the products you can exchange, but what keeps the company together, what keeps the culture together, what keeps the people together are these kind of social links. So more and more people also on the labor market, which where there's a lot of com competition, as you know, um, people or companies differentiate themselves with the social activities and the development work they're doing. So it's almost a recruiting tool. It's not a recruiting tool as such, but it's a differentiation mm. and it's used for the recruiting process. But beyond that, right, companies are creating markets for the future and Philips is not alone with that mm. approach. So where do you want to take your business in the next five years, let's say, what do you have uh, coming up that you think might be exciting for not just your customers, but also folks in the aid community that are looking for direction, that are looking for interesting partnerships? Where do you see points of connection there? Yeah, a couple of things. First of all, in the healthcare area, we have to get to affordable and sustainable healthcare. So if I look at the new devices in ultrasound, for example, there are some quite affordable devices, which sometimes you uh, work with battery, so you don't need electricity all the time, and they're really made for remote areas. Mm -hmm. And that I think that development in that industry is very exciting also for the development work. For lighting, LED is a revolution, and it brings the prices of energy and lighting down. It's very good for the environment because it's energy efficiency, which is really you know, at its point. And that also triggers lots of development projects. If I look in the area of consumer lifestyle, there we also A, have products which are made for developing markets specifically. They are um, really catered around the needs up there, but also the entire development towards digital gives access to tools, to solutions, which in the past were more made for developed countries. So there are lots of exciting developments. Mm. And do you see yourself uh, producing products in the future that might uh, primarily be geared towards the developing world rather than how companies have traditionally structured their R&D, which is to focus on those rich customers in the industrialized world. Do you see that changing as well? Oh, definitely. We have big sites and we are investing massively in India, in China. And if you see who is running these organizations, not just the employees, but the entire management, they are local people. And they are in very close contact with the communities up there. And the innovation, the products are really focused on the needs of these countries. Interesting. We'll be following this. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. It was great to talk to you. Thanks a lot. Thanks.